What was your take on not being in the debate right before the Iowa caucus? Like, do you think that was a uh, a huge driver of the outcome, or do you think, eh, had we been there, same result would have happened? Well, it def it definitely hurt us. Uh, yeah. I believe that it hurt us. Um, the, I mean, that really drives perceptions in an important way. And of course, we knew, but nobody else knew that the game media blackout was going on. Like, mm -hmm. if you ask the average person on the street, um, like, do you know about the Yang Media blackout? And it's a very, very tiny number. People don't realize yeah. that, that, that there was like a, a, a perceptions were being managed in a particular way. But within the Yang Gang, we knew about it. Um, and I believed we needed to um, make it known that, that we were playing with people's perceptions. But because he wasn't even on the debate stage in January, mm -hmm. that made it so that um, you were able to completely take him out of the picture. Well, shit. I mean, sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss here. Um, yeah, go for it, man. They, they were taking him out of the picture no matter what, um, yeah. which was really a big deal and we should have taken it more seriously. So as you may have known, and I appreciate your support in this, Tom. Um, I led protests outside of the January uh, debates. Yes. Uh, talking about doing this, and I was saying, we need to fight back. Yes. We need to I remember that. Narrative. Yes. And I was resisted by a lot of people who were worried that it would look bad. Um, and, and, you know, my thoughts on this is, you know, some people will try to twist it, but it, you got to do something to make your case. And I ended up getting eight media appearances in, in things like everything from German public radio to a, a few conservative outlets, um, Breitbart, Infowars, um, Washington Post, CNN. I did a number of interviews as a result of the fact that we showed up to protest. And yeah. I was able to tell people, Andrew Yang is polling higher than one third of that debate stage. He's not there because it was a gerrymandered debate. Um, and so next time around, I hope people will join me and we can protest and do it in a way that is humanity first, you know, yeah. that, that is, that is, um, polite, courteous, but firm and strong and not prepared to be walked on anymore. I totally agree. I remember, I remember before it, cause I was thinking like, yeah, we need to, um, we need to kind of stand our ground on this thing. Yeah, and there were some people that were saying like, "Oh, let's have a like a birthday party instead." And I was like, "No, <laughs> like that, like this. This is a this is a travesty that we're being our voices are being suppressed, and our candidate is not allowed to be on the stage before the first caucus of the country mm -hmm. uh, days before it. Like this is a huge blow to the campaign." Especially to your point, since so many voters are concerned about viability, if the right. dude's not on the stage, it screams fringe candidate. It's like he's not even on there. You know, Absolutely. he's like some rando. And then, Tom, there's all these ways that they subconsciously um, uh, mess with your perceptions on the stage. Um, the, the much less speaking time and pushing them back. Like it, a minute in the first uh, 10 minutes of the debate is worth so much more in terms of donation potential uh, yeah, yeah. than a minute in the, like between the 80th right. and 90th minute of the debate. Now, Andrew yeah. Yang, I pointed this out in the ABC debate. I think it was, um, October. He, um, they asked him a couple of questions right off the bat, but they didn't come back to him for, no, no. He had his opening statement. This is what it was. He had his opening statement. And then a question. He was not asked a second question until the 75th minute of that debate. In another debate, uh, I think it was the December debate. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it was November. Um, and I led protests outside of that one as well. Um, they did not let him speak for the first 33 minutes. So subconsciously, you don't even see him. Yeah. So not even part of the picture. He hasn't been on screen. Nobody, no curious voters sitting watching this and like, who's the Asian guy? Oh, I'm going to Google mm -hmm. it. Asian presidential candidate, Andrew Yang. And they, then there's the, the possibility that they go down that rabbit, rabbit hole. So this did affect us for sure. Yeah. And I, I, I wonder if they had 
sort of done similar things to other candidates. Um, I have a feeling the other can like I, I have a feeling the media would not have done that to a female candidate or an African American candidate because it would have been like this is bullshit. Like you cannot do this. But I kind of feel like they didn't get as much heat. Uh, He's Asian. You know, Right. Yeah. It's like, well, hey, look, he should yeah. be happy that that he was at the first few like you had your you had your your five minutes of fame kind of thing. So I, I agree. I, I kind of feel like, uh, of course, we want to be humanity first. We want to be positive. But this is a this is a full contact sport. And, you know, yeah. you're, you're not going to get to first place by always, you know, just giving, you know, always deferring to people. Yeah, exactly. You can't always be deferential. You sometimes do have to be confrontational. You try to do so in a way that that indicates to people that you are challenging the the behavior or you know the problem itself and not the person. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you know Andrew Yang could do this um, in the future and still do it in a way that is respectful, and you still have the respect of the audience. Mm -hmm. um, but. Sometimes you kind of you like it is a natural aspect of the social dynamics of of like community oriented animals that you lose respect for those that do not kind of stick up for themselves mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. you realize, oh, that person can be walked over. No problem. So yeah. you, at a certain point, you have to stand up.